Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. My name is Ross Benjamin of RBWins.com. It is Monday, April the 10th, and uh, like every Monday, I'm joined by Mr. Doug Upstone of DocSports.com, one of the finest handicappers in the country, good friend of mine. And Doug, how are you, my friend? How was your weekend? Uh, not too bad, Ross. Just all things considered. Hope everybody had a nice Easter, by the way. And uh, so that that was all good here. And uh, from a sports betting standpoint, continue just to to you know do pretty well. Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, what is it? Uh, Nineteen? Uh, or excuse me, no, sorry, twenty nine and uh, twenty nine and twenty. The last eighteen days, so solid numbers there. Fantastic, no, but solid from that standpoint. In the last 45 days, in terms of that, looking to do with winning days, I'm just under 60% and up over $5,500 there. So nice. that's good. Uh, looking, uh, had some hit some nice big plays over the weekend uh, and didn't do anything other than one day on Friday with the NBA. And even then, I got burned by Orlando. Or, I'm sorry, by uh, not Orlando. I think it was Miami. Yeah, by Miami, who said that they really wanted to win the game and they didn't start one starter. <laughs> Oh, so boy. you gotta yeah. love that, but that's what happens the last few days. Yeah, <laughs> and is, what, go ahead. I'm sorry. And no, I'm sorry. It's it's part of the part of the deal there. So uh, yeah. that's why, really, it, it all. I I wish I would have done it. Just avoided the last four days and just stay away from it. I avoided three out of the four, but I really thought after reading several different articles that uh, Miami said they really wanted this game. Um, Obviously, they were not telling the truth. Ross. No. And, you know, that it, it, we've discussed this time and time again, not only with you, but when I have my other guest on, I know uh, Sean Higgs is like anti NBA all the way because of same, some of the reasons you just discussed. And, you know, Doug, um, the NBA and the emergence of legalized sports betting in the United States which finds a lot of the NBA arenas now being able to accept sports bets right in the arena. Um, also, uh, a lot of sponsorships involves hand in hand with the NBA in uh, various sports sports books, United States legalized mm -hmm. sports books. You would think that somewhere along the line, they need to regulate this. Uh, they've regulated it good, okay, in terms of, making sure there's no shady business going on. Okay? Right. But I think there needs to be further regulation. And I don't know who would step forward in this regard, because look at the sports books love the fact that the NBA teams are not being transparent on who's playing and who's not playing until the last second. But at some point, I, I don't know what the answer is. I know this, what I've witnessed this year in the NBA in terms of uh, their transparency on player availability for that particular evening and holding out that information till almost an hour before game time in certain situations, uh, that it, that needs to be regulated because that is not fair to the sports better. Um, and I, I don't know, again, if you have any thoughts off the top of your head on that topic or what could be possibly done to rectify that to some degree. Yeah. Um, well, the, yeah. Well, the NBA was the first league to embrace sports betting. Okay. Yeah. And be, even before it came legal or just as it was becoming legal. So they embraced it right away. So the commissioner is in favor of it. So, so in, he's the one person that can drive it. Now the teams, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people are frustrated and I, I was to it. I have been, you know, during the course of the year, you know, no different though than baseball when you have an announced pitcher and, you know, for no apparent reason, they decide not to pitch him that day. It seems that comes up, you know, in, yeah. in various you know scenarios during the course of the year. But, you know, from the standpoint, I don't think the team is under any obligation to cater to sports betters. Okay. I mean, you know, they're going to do what's best for them, just like the sports better would want to do for them. At the same time, you know, the commissioner is in favor of gambling, but he's in favor of in the context that it drives revenue for the sport by yeah. working with sports books. So if sports books are winning more money in part because sport, because the teams are withholding or 
you know, what, whatever term you want to use, not giving the information that benefits the sports books, then what's the reason for the commissioner to want to do that? Okay. Especially, yeah. Especially when the NBA is uh, NBA teams are getting 1% of the revenue share right. on sports right. betting. That's part of the regulation. So, I mean, again, there's no checks and balances, Doug. And right. I get that there's always that uncertainty. You mentioned baseball, but I'm sure you would agree that um, how many times a starting pitcher getting scratched compared to what's gone on in the NBA this year is pretty minute in comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in, in a general sense. I mean, for what for for me personally, it's been more of a rare exception. Yeah. You know, now, now do I know other people that have gotten burned, you know, more regularly than what they should? Yes, you know, from, from that standpoint. So I, it, it's one of those things, though. I don't think it's an easy answer. I mean, yes, you would like to do that, but again, I, you know, what is the purpose of the for the team? Now, you know, you, you could do a better job by, you know, and I this I don't know how you would do this because it's not like the NBA players aren't making money, but there, there should be something also to do with how how many games a team plays. I don't I don't like the fact that, for example, analytics, OK, when they look at a season and they look at players coming off injuries or they look at older players or whatever, they already I know this for a fact. They cross. They've already crossed off games for certain players to play on particular teams without playing one game for the upcoming season. Forget what's going to happen during the season if guys get hurt. There's guys that already I have been predetermined they're going to play maybe seventy games a year. Okay, yeah. and that that to me is bad for the sport because uh, I forget what team it was, but uh, yeah, I forget. One team, they played the Lakers, they played Golden State, and I, I think it was, the, yeah, and the Clippers. And in that thing, uh, it was the Eastern team. I did not think of it, but Eastern team hosted those teams. So they did not see LeBron James. They did not see Anthony Davis. They did not see Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George. And they did not see Steph Curry. Okay. Yeah. But yet the cost of those tickets was not one no, dime less. They, they and exact. probably were higher because because of, of that only coming once a year that to me is something that should definitely should be regulated just across the board you, you got i mean i'm not saying you have to play 82 games but come on you know th this that type of stuff's ridiculous and fans should not have to carry the load if teams have already determined they're not going to play certain guys in certain games yeah no doubt i mean you can't have it all is what i'm trying to say you can't right. have it both ways and the nba is having it uh all and it is having it both ways Right. Yeah, we forget that the fans support the sport. You know, these millions of dollars these guys make uh, are come hand in hand with the absurd ticket prices these days. And also, uh, of course, merchandise revenue. Uh, but having said that, you know, I, I think we're beating a dead horse right now. Um, you mentioned the commissioner, like you said, uh, I mean, uh, he he's fine with it right now because he was more supportive, like you said, in the revenue share aspect of it more than uh, allowing people to bet on sports kind of thing yeah. legally. Well, so the, the, what's going to change it is is dwindling TV ratings. OK, that that's what will drive it. Uh, yeah. And so if people start uh, stop watching uh, and and I think that's that is very possible because betters are still going to watch because they're betting the games. But the general public gets turned off by this, you know, quite a bit eas easier. And the other aspect of this, you know, this whole buy-in round, it's it's fun, but yeah. it doesn't change some basic facts as to who wins NBA titles. We can have that discussion later because uh, something I've I've said on this show many times in the past. But it's just so, you know, it's pretty limited. And when it's compared to the NHL, if you go round by round, I mean, there's no comparison. NHL is a superior product from yeah. a playoff standpoint. Yeah, and there's no two ways about it. I've long contended, and I know you've agreed with me over the course of the last few years of working together, the NHL playoffs in terms of intensity, excitement, and, and, and you just and there's nothing that compares to it, you know? Right. I remember – being on a sports talk show, uh, a radio show a few years ago where a gentleman, and I'm not going to mention his name out of, cause I, it's not, I have respect for the gentleman, but when he told me that he felt that the masters has more intensity than the NHL playoffs, I told him, 
you need to watch the NHL playoffs. And sure enough, he did. A couple of days later, he sent me an email and says, Ross, you're absolutely right. I feel foolish for even saying that. So yes. anyway, Doug, let's get off that topic. We're going to be talking. Uh, we're going to be giving you two NBA play-in tournament games on Tuesday, the 11th. Doug will be covering the Atlanta-Miami game. I will be covering the Minnesota and L.A. Lakers game. Before we get to that, Doug, um, any other topics you want to bring up? Yeah, and, and I'll make this. I'll make this brief. Uh, the one thing that that I noticed was the looking at the odds to win the championship, and what stuck out to me. And I'm not saying this is wrong, but I find it interesting. So Bucks first, Celtics second, third was the Suns, uh, fourth was the Warriors, and fifth was Denver. So here's Denver as the yeah. number one seed. Okay, and they're fifth. Okay, and only third in their conference. Now. With Golden State and Phoenix, I get it, okay, uh, because the history that that the Warriors have, okay, makes perfect sense to me that they should be that high. And also, I would assume uh, playing into public opinion and how well Phoenix has played, having Kevin Durant, okay, along with uh, Booker on the same team, and they're still solid defensively, but they're not real deep, okay, from that standpoint. Here's my question, though, Ross, okay, is that with those two teams, do you honestly believe that Phoenix with Kevin Durant is going to be able to play four series and not have an injury? Okay, that's question one. The next question is, do you can you back a team that is unlikely to play a, a single series in which they will be a um, have home court advantage after they went eleven and thirty straight up? and 13 and 28 against the spread on the road. Yeah. Like um, Golden State did. Golden State. Uh, again, two parts to that. Uh, let's start with Phoenix. Um, I would say that uh, there's always a chance that somebody's going to get hurt through the course of a series. We see it just about in every series. So I hope that answers that question. However, there's a part B to that answer. Um, injuries at this time of year, uh, players play through them more than they would in regular season, which I'm sure you would agree. Kevin Durant's a perfect example. It seems like between load management and injuries, he seems to, he's been injury prone over the last few seasons. Right. I mean, it's well documented, but when you look at his playoff history, he's been very durable in terms of his availability. And I, I think that you'll see, um, you may see an injury, but short of a high ankle sprain that will keep you out for a couple of weeks, short of a torn lig knee ligament or something severe like that, Doug, uh, I, I don't put as much emphasis on that at this time of year than I would um, during a regular season. Uh, the other part of the question with the Golden State Warriors, and I think uh, that goes hand in hand with their availability as well. I mean, they spent the majority of the season uh, not healthy in, in very few games. It seems like maybe a quarter of their games, they were fully healthy where they had their full arsenal. Um, now, is that an excuse for a record like they posted during, on the road? No, but that nucleus of players and, and core group of players that have been so vital in their success over the last few years are in still intact for the most part. And they've proven they could win on the road in, at playoff time. So, yeah, I mean, those are both valid points, but that's just my opinion. That's solely my opinion. Um, and, again, no matter how you answer that question, uh, it's based purely on conjecture because uh, we don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, I mean, I the, the other thing I worry about with Phoenix is that, you know, they traded some guys that had that added to their depth in yeah. order to have that. So, and it's happened the last two years. Chris Paul gets injured. Now, Chris Paul's on, no longer the focus of the team. I get that. But he's still their point guard, okay? That And he plays the majority of the minutes. If he gets injured again or if he's hobbled again, that makes them just that much less effective. So that's one thing. And again, I'm talking about winning the title. I'm not talking yeah, about winning a series, anything like that. And and then with same with Golden State. I mean, it's just, I just, it, it seems, it seems peculiar to me that a team could have championship form with such a poor record on the road 
injuries aside, okay, yeah. I mean that that's all that. And this is not the same team that was here last year, okay? Uh, because th- th- there's a different makeup to it, the team. And so, with that in mind, I'm just I'm not sold. If if either one of those two went went out early. I can't say I'd be surprised. I, I'm not going to say I'm going to predict that to happen, but if they if they went out earlier than expected, that to me would be no surprise, just based on kind of how the season has played out. And I understand the whole thing about the 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 other part of it. And my last point, I'll just make it quick. Okay, top three seeds in each conference. They've there's only been twice that that has occurred where a team was not a top three seed that won the NBA title. Okay, go, so sure. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, good points because uh, Denver uh, being the best record in in the Western Conference, and um, right, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they had the best record in the Western Conference this year. Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay, so that's how much I've closely followed the <laughs> NBA. I follow it from a betting standpoint, but I, I gave up on looking at the standings every day because it, it makes no sense to me to do so. Um, and in any event. Um, lot to look forward to in the NBA playoffs. Now we'll see uh, players that are going to play through injuries where the availability, you could bank on the fact that nobody's going to be held out for load management at this time of year. That's for sure. And if they are, uh, (laughs) the general manager and the coach should be fired because I don't care what kind of analytics you're coming in. You're playing for it all right now. And, you know, this is a wide open NBA right now. I mean, there's not that one team Doug, that really strikes me as head and shoulders above all the rest. Uh, like the years when we saw Golden State only lose 11, 12 games during the regular season. We don't have that type of team. The closest nope. being uh, is Milwaukee in the East and in, in, in Denver in the West. And, and look, you just mentioned it in the odds. I mean, I trust the odds makers. You also got to remember, too, and we're, we got to get on to our games after this uh, but r- one final point, we also have to remember, um, you know, when we're talking about Golden State and Phoenix and uh, who was the other team? We were Golden State, Phoenix, and who else were we? Discussing? Denver. Denver. Um, Golden State has won multiple world titles yeah. with that certain core group of players there. So that that weighs in heavily at this time of year. You know, the odds makers certainly know just based on perception, um, they have to set the line accordingly. So uh, a lot of good stuff we'll we'll have to talk about over the next few weeks, Doug. Let's start with uh, the NBA play-in tournament, buddy. Uh, Tomorrow night's games, uh, Atlanta at Miami, Minnesota at the Lakers. Let's start with you and the Atlanta-Miami game right now, uh, Miami just before we went on air, check the line. Miami is minus five and two twenty six and a half. Take us through what you think here, Doug. All right. So the winner of this game uh, is will automatically advance to play Boston in the second seed. Uh, at Boston, who is the second seed? The winner of this game will be the seventh seed going forward. And if if the if Miami comes through and wins, they advance. And, but Atlanta is not done if they lose because then Atlanta has the opportunity to play Friday against the Toronto Chicago winner okay, at so home beside at yeah. home. Right. Right. So that's, that's all set up that way. Now the heat have dominated this series, Ross. Uh, once again, they won three out of four covered, covered the same amount of games and the straight up winner of this series this year was four and against the spread. Now common theme in this series, especially when they're playing in Miami domination again, Nine and one straight up, six and three against the spread, South Florida the last three years. As to why, my, my thought is because Miami has a stronger front court with Jimmy Butler and uh, Bam Adebayo. Uh, it's not as good of a matchup for Atlanta because Clint Cap- Capella and DeAndre Hunter, good players, but not what I would consider at the level of either one of the Miami players at this point uh, of, of their careers. And it also, the Hawks are set up differently. They're built more around uh, Trey Young and uh, DeJounte Murray, which is the backcourt. And so I also think that helps explain when your team is built just primarily around your backcourt and don't have much up front, I think that's why you don't win on the road consistently. And that's certainly been part of the reason why Atlanta, once again, losing record on the road, 17 and 24 straight up and against the spread. Now, Eric Spolster, Eric Spolster's team, Ross, 27 and 14 at home, pretty solid from that standpoint, but they're a bankroll draining 
14, 25, and two against the number, and they've only won by 1.2 points per game in their home games uh, over the entire course of the season. Statistically, uh, from a uh, efficiency standpoint, pretty similar on the opposite ends. Atlanta, seven in offense, Miami 24th on offense, on defense, Miami 9th, Atlanta 22nd. Now, as you, uh, as you said, Miami opened up minus four and a half. Uh, and, you know, some sports books are right around minus five. The four games this year they played, no spread was greater than four. OK, now injuries and other things apply to that. The last time the spread was this high was in last year's playoffs, which were in, in a first round game games. Uh, they were both at Miami. Miami was bigger than a four point spread in both those games. They won and covered. They went on to win the series four to one. However, game five in that series, which was the desperation game for Atlanta, they were a four and a half point underdog and they covered the spread in that loss. I'm looking at Miami, Ross. They're nine and 21 as a favorite this year when it's been three and a half to nine and a half. I'm going to say Atlanta covers, fails to win. Okay. And, and that in this buy in or play in game, excuse me, this play in game. Yeah. And uh, they have some, uh, they had some wiggle room, Atlanta or Miami. Uh, if they, if they lose like Doug alluded right. to, uh, they will host uh, the, the winner of the Chicago and Toronto game and the winner of that game will be the number eight seed and be awarded with a date with the M Milwaukee Bucks. Good, good luck with that. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, some notes I have written down here is uh, Miami has gone five and old to the over in the last five Atlanta four Oh and one to the over in her last five uh, Miami um, four games versus Atlanta this year, averaging 116 points per game, shooting 48% or better in all four of those contests, Atlanta, the last three against Miami, averaging 119 points per game and shooting 53.8% uh, from the field. So the matchups this year when they play each other, defense has seemed to be an afterthought. Yet this total opened at 228 and is now at 226 and a half. So that should tell you how uh, the sports books are undeterred when it comes to regular season results because – as we know, well know, in the NBA playoffs, teams tend to tighten the screws down defensively and play at a little slower pace than we see uh, during uh, regular season action because there's so much on the line. So Doug likes the um, Al Atlanta Hawks plus the five over the Miami Heat. He's not predicting an outright upset. As a matter of fact, he thinks Miami will win, but he thinks this game goes right down to the wire. And uh, he's going to take the underdog Hawks on the road in the play-in game on Tuesday, uh, the 11th of April. All right, Minnesota and the Lakers. You know, I really had to comb through a lot in this game to come up with uh, my pick. Um, and we got thrown a monkey wrench, right, Doug? The game opens up at five and a half. We find out today that Rudy Gobert is suspended for one game. Uh, due to the altercation with one of his teammates on the bench in the regular season finale uh, or late in the season. I, I, it had to be the regular season finale. You know, and Rudy Gobert, maybe he's not the defensive player he was at one point of his career. Uh, he still alters shots. He's not, he, if you look at him st statistically, he um, still blocks shots, but not at the rate that he used to when he was younger. Um, and, you know, his is good statistics, but not great. I mean, 13 points a game, 11 rebounds per game. He averages a double double. It seems like any good big man in the league does that these days. But he was really good against the Lakers in three. They played um, in the three games against the Lakers that he played this year. He averaged over 19 in a game with 15 rebounds per game. However, I, you know, the Lakers finished nine and two. In their last 11, Minnesota finishes five and one straight up in ATS in their last six on the road. Um, the Timberwolves 16 and six straight up this year versus teams like the Lakers that have a mediocre between 510 to 600 win percent. Not mediocre, but just above average, but not in the elite category. Um, and Minnesota won two to three matchups against the Lakers this year, uh, including the one in LA. Um, so I think the line, uh, the line movement of five and a half to seven and a half, and I'm interested to hear what Doug has to say. 
but I think that's more prompted by the absence of Gobert more than anything else. And I'm going to take a small chance here because, uh, uh, you know, there's not much disparity in these two teams' record. I understand the go Bears out, but I'm going to take the seven and a half points here with the Minnesota Timberwolves against the LA Lakers. Yeah, the I think that the with the Lakers, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go the other way, Ross, uh, yeah. on this one. I just I I just think the Lakers are just playing better. Okay, right now, and I think that that is the biggest thing that they have going for them. They found, let's just say, a rhythm to their offense. Um, defensively, they don't put a great deal of effort in, uh, for the most part. But you know, they got a, they got the majority of their healthy bodies. Everybody understands their roles. And then losing Gobert, yeah, okay. <laughs> Odds makers giving him a point and a half, basically, for being out. But you know, like I said, that that presence in the middle that's yeah. that still counts for something. And I know that you know one of the big things uh, I I don't know if, if block shots are down just across the board, but it it would make sense that they would be because again the game can, continues to get more spread out and the lane is primarily used either to drive okay at this point and or have your superstar drive the ball to the lane. And, you know, you're always and you're trying to move the big man out of the lane by, you know, with different very with different uh, ways of uh, bringing him out there by who's playing against him. So I just myself, I just like the Lakers here. I don't think, you know, do I think they're going to crush them? No, but I think they'll just do enough, make enough free throws at the end of the game to do that. So we'll have a little difference of opinion on that one. But by the same token, I'm not going to sit here and say, Ross, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> oh, you that's, never that's would do that. I would all. never do it. No, no, we, no, no. That's besides the point. I'm just, yeah. I'm, all I'm saying is that the, from that standpoint, I just think they got a, a chance to cover, but if Minnesota did cover, I can't, I can't say I would be entirely surprised either. Yeah, um, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, certainly the star power resides with the L.A. Lakers, even though uh, LeBron's up there in age, he's still proven to be an ageless one with his performance level. Uh, is he as good as he was five years ago? No, but who is? You know, it's, you know, when you get up in your mid-30s and late-30s, there there is bound to be some type of decline. It's just a matter of how much. And I don't think that we've seen a rapid decline or even a substantial decline in his play. Um, and, and we both know that at, at playoff time, he's going to turn up the intensity level. So we'll see. I mean, again, yeah. this is probably a side that I'm not going to use, uh, but being that I signed myself the game, I wanted to give my best, put my best foot forward. And there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. It's a healthy thing, you know? Uh, Absolutely. People so, disagree with us all the time on these videos. Uh, well, so what's the yeah, big yeah. yeah, it has just, a lot to do I'm with joking. us. It has a lot to do with us being uh, 80 years old, according <laughs> to some guys. Anyway, um, Doug, real quickly, we're running yep. out of time here. Tell the folks what you may have coming up, your hot streaks. And, of course, you want them to find you at DocSports.com. Yes, so that's exactly where to find me is DocSports.com. I gave you some of the the longer term uh, things going on. Uh, Major League Baseball, not a great start. I'm eight and six, but I'm happy to be there because now the numbers kick in for me because I, I got data to work with. So I'm excited to really get going and uh, diving into the data going forward to put some some winning streaks together. NBA closed really well, 28 and 16 on the season. Uh, I've won in the playoffs each of the last three years. Expect have the same expectations going in with that. And NHL uh, hit a uh, uh, on big plays in particular, I had another one over the weekend, uh, six straight seven unit plays in the NHL. And I'm so I'm probably going to have one more before the season ends coming up this week. Cause we're just going through Friday and actually even Friday, there's only two games. So primarily through Thursday. So looking forward to that and then really looking forward to the postseason in the NHL Ross. And folks, uh, Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. And again, folks, DocSports.com, Doug's told you his records. You've heard him for the last three years on the show. The guy knows what he's doing. He wins consistently, not every day, and none of us do. Okay. Uh, but you can find me at RBWins.com. I have not really participated in the NHL all year, but like I've done the last few years, I do uh, go heavy during the NHL playoffs. Um, and also the NBA playoffs coming up, uh, NBA, um, again, I haven't done a lot in the NBA recently because of all the reasons we just discussed and major league baseball, uh, boy, oh boy, 
I don't have time to go through the three losses I had over the weekend with my sides. I explained it to Doug off here. But even with those three money line losses, I'm a combined 15 and five with my last 20 Major League Baseball run line and money line picks combined. So, uh, again, I lost two games in extra innings. Another in the other game I lost on Saturday, I, I blew a pair of four run leads. He had the bases loaded with nobody out, couldn't get a run home. So, it was just a, a bad sequence of events. And sometimes those breaks go for you. And when things aren't going your way, they go against you. And that's particularly what happened there. But still, 15 and five, last 20 uh, on my Major League Baseball sites. RBWins.com, folks, and also Doug Upstone at DocSports.com. Doug will be back with us on Thursday. We'll be discussing uh, the play in tournament games on Friday. Um, I will be back tomorrow with Jesse Shul and Sean Higgs, and we'll be discussing the other two NBA play-in games that take place on Wednesday. Until then, folks, uh, for Doug Upstone and Ross Benjamin, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Make sure you give us a like. Take care and God bless, folks.